this year one of my goals on the channel is I want to do a better job kind of showcasing and documenting the progress that my dogs make. So last year, I feel like my videos were more about me learning how to bobcat hunt, and but this year I want to make it more dog centric. So real quick, I just want to give you, uh, I just wanted to introduce you to my two main dogs right now, who are up on the rig box right here. So let's do that. First up, we have Cooley. Cooley is the second hound I ever got. Got her as a nine week old puppy. Uh, got her off Craigslist, believe it or not. And she is now five and a half years old. She's had a litter of puppies. And um, she's an incredible coon dog. And she's still learning bobcats. Bobcats, she, she, uh, it's been pretty tough transitioning her onto bobcats just because I feel like she kind of built up some bad habits from running so many raccoons. Um, I don't think it's something that we can't fix and can't uh, work on because she has been, has tree bobcats, um, but we still got a long ways to go before I really feel like she's a, you know, real deal bobcat dog. So that's Cooley. I love her to death. She's super duper sweet, incredibly smart. Uh, she's, you know, over time she's gotten a, gotten a little more weight on her, but she's got some muscles. Uh, she's not quite as fast as she used to be, but she can still cover tons of ground and she can run all day, day after day. Very durable. Over here, we have Rue. So Rue comes out of my mentor's dogs. He is, I got him as a 10 week old puppy. He's about three and a half years old right now. And um, he comes from my mentor's dogs who are, you know, straight up bred strictly for bobcats. So he's my most promising prospect out of all my dogs. Um, he has, he just last year, towards the end of the season, he started striking from the box. So that's what he's doing up here. I'm cruising around. He's working the wind, trying to smell some sort of cat scent. And when he does, he barks to let me know. And then it's off to the races. So he is also still very, very, you know, very young in his bobcat career. But he's got everything in him to be a great bobcat dog. And all of his brothers... Um, all of his litter mates have turned out to be very, very good bobcat dogs. So, yeah, that's Rue. You're going to see a lot of action from Rue this year. Huh, buddy? Yeah. He's very, very sweet as well. He's got incredible feet. Look at these feet. Look at these feet. Look at that. He kind of, he's got what we call it cat feet. So he kind of stands up on his toes like that. Um, I don't fully understand why that's a good thing, but it's a, it is a desirable trait in hounds. Cooley has it to a certain extent, um, but she's got a little bit more, she's got more of a coon foot. Um, she's still, you know, kind of right in the middle, I, I think. Um, not an expert on any of that kind of stuff, but, but yeah, so we got, so Rue and Cooley, these are my all-stars. And we're going to do everything we possibly can to get them on as many bobcats this year as we can. I'm gonna take every opportunity, uh, call in favors if I need to, bribe people, who knows? We're gonna do whatever we can. So thanks for tuning in and uh, yeah, look forward to showing you a lot more of these dogs in the future. When I was collaring up the dogs, uh, which I had to I had to shift some stuff around on the alpha, there was some conflicting ID codes and things like that, which I'm sure a lot of you know about, um, especially when you're running multiple dogs getting everybody collared up and of course here comes a big truck down the road uh, it's deer season right now I have every right to be out here but still there's a lot of deer hunters out um, so we're just gonna have to kind of play it all by ear today uh, the dogs are so amped up they just want to get running and so it took me a, I had to stop I had to get the truck to stop completely because I didn't want them running over any of my dogs so I got them gathered up loaded into the box and uh, yeah, it didn't didn't look so uh, didn't look so great uh, to the driver. I'm sure uh, he seemed a little upset. I think he'll get over it. Um, but now we're 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 rolling. I got Cooley and Rue up on the rig box, the new and improved dog box. This is our first run with the new box, um, and so far so good. I love this thing. It's got tons of room in it. The rail's nice and tall. 
Uh, the, ri the rigging platform is huge, so I can fit a bunch of dogs up there. Um, but for now, we're gonna hunt kind of tight, so I'm not gonna, you know, they're only getting turned loose if we actually strike a track from the road here. So, yep, that's what's happening. Stay tuned. Somebody very close by just uh, ripped off a rifle shot. Holy cow, that sounded close. I don't know where that came from. That's a little, that's always a little sketchy when you hear the shot, but you don't know where it came from. I think I might be hallucinating a little bit, but I almost felt like I smelt the gunfire or the gunpowder. I don't know if that's possible, but, or it could be the gun that I have on me. Dang, that was sketchy. Okay, come on. So we've been driving around for about an hour or so. Um, but I just got to one of my favorite roads. It's a nice isolated road. So uh, there's a lot of people driving around today. There's a lot of deer hunters out. So I'm just trying to avoid it, everybody. But I need to get some exercise on these dogs. So yeah, I'm gonna let the blue pups down and I'm gonna let them road down this road here. And then we're probably gonna make our way out of here because we're not striking anything. There's a lot of people around. And uh, yeah, it's been good so far, but I uh, was hoping for better. smelling something one of my goals this hunting season is to get my blue pups that would be Bruno Clover and Tika I want to get them uh, up to speed on rigging last week I worked on them I worked with them in the garage with the dog box on the ground using food training to teach them to go up and down on command so they were doing that pretty good but now that it's up on the truck, that was a whole other thing. So Bruno didn't want to get up there by himself. Uh, I had to, I had to lift him up there basically, and then he didn't want to stay up there. So I had to come up with a tether for him. I decided to not weld um, loops or anything, or you know, and put actual permanent chains on the box for a tether because I don't know. I don't like them jangling around back there. It drives me nuts. And um, and I just wanted to get the dog box on, so I was just going to be, you know, a couple more hours of work to, to do. So I just used a, a piece of rock climbing webbing. I have a lot of rock climbing equipment with me, usually. Um, so I just took a little piece of webbing, that's the orange bit there you see in this, on, on the iPhone. Um, and yeah, a leash connector. And I just tied it. To the uh, tied it to the rail, so that work that works pretty great. Um, and then I can just take it off when I'm done, because the end goal is I want the dogs to be able to ride up there just like Cooley and Rue are doing, completely uh, of their own accord. And when I tell them to go up, they go up, and when I give them the command to come down, they come down. So I'm gonna just work with the blue pups one at a time. And until they can, until they're comfortable riding up there, and then we'll, you know, we'll slowly work them into it. It took me, you know, it took me a couple of months with Cooley and Rue doing it consistently to where they're actually, I don't have to worry about them up there anymore. So, yeah, bit of a, bit of a, you know, bit of a learning curve for the dogs, but we'll get it done. <laughs> 